Welcome to Jumpstart Your Joy. I'm your host, Paula Jenkins. I invite you to join me as we explore how inspiring people have chosen joy in their lives and what they have to share with us about how to jumpstart joy in the world. Plus, how do we follow our own hearts, find work that lights us up while mindfully noticing the role joy plays in our own journey. Welcome to episode 150. This is Paula Jenkins, the host of Jumpstart Your Joy. This week on the show, I'm excited to be doing the first of four very short solo cast episodes that I'm doing in the month of August to round out season three. I'm really excited to be trying hopefully what will be about 10 minutes on some of my favorite topics and just to see how it goes, see what you guys think. Uh, and I would love to hear from you if you're digging this format. I want to give you guys all a big warm welcome and say thanks so much for tuning in this week and always. If you're new, Jumpstart Your Joy is a podcast that comes out weekly on Tuesday mornings and you can find it on all the regular podcasting spots, but be sure and look for it on Apple Podcasts and Google Podcasts, uh, and hit subscribe while you're over there. So let's just dive right on into the show this week, is all about finding clarity with essentialism. So if you've been listening listening for a while, you may have heard me talk a little bit about Greg McCowan's book, which is Essentialism. I love it. I think I first listened to it, and I do listen to it on Audible. I will give you guys a link in the show notes Because you can get a free downloaded book on Audible. You don't have to sign up or anything. I'll just give you the link. This is a great one to start out with. And truly, from the moment I started listening, I found it very hard to turn off. And I've listened to it actually a couple times since. I think it hits a really sweet spot for me because I am a project manager, have been for 20 years. And I'm also a certified life coach. And I think there's something about this book that really blends that very logical, pragmatic practice of doing less but better, which is kind of the key focus of this book. But also there's a layer of philosophy to this that like you can really apply to business. So my two favorite parts about this book are the first thing that I mentioned, which is really Greg McCowan explains that essentialism is, and the essentialists, they work with doing less but better. And throughout the book, you will hear him saying that an essentialist is doing the essential few instead of the trivial many. And I really love that he calls this out because, of course, every day in our business and in our lives, we're probably met with met with a million offers of things that we could do. And so in order to become successful, and that's kind of that's the premise for this is, you know, following your dreams and becoming successful in what you do is that we have to begin to focus on the essential few instead of getting pulled into those trivial many. And I love, love, love other thing that he brings up, which is all about building in room for downtime in your day to day. And he really cites that that is how successful people continue to be able to stay focused on the essential few, right? Is that you build in this downtime. So let me read to you. This is a quote from, he was actually on Google Talks, I believe, which I will also link up to you for you guys because you can get totally lost. There's so many great speakers that have spoken at Google and put them all on YouTube. So, but let me read this from Greg McCowan. Build a life based on the voice inside instead of the noise outside. Learn to discern what is essential, the vital few from the trivial many, that we can make the micro adjustments adjustments to the things we do often to take steps to life that is truly essential down the path. Life is fast and full of opportunity, and the complication is that we feel we have to do everything. We can make a different choice. We can learn to eliminate the non-essentials, and as a result of that, live a life that really matters. But of, of course, I hope that totally resonates with you guys as much as it does with me because it strikes me as I was listening and have kind of lived with, if it's a way of saying it, this book for a while is that busyness, and I want to split that into two words, so busy, B-U-S-Y-ness, really is one of those things that creates dis-ease, which when you collapse it into word, one word is disease in our world. And like I said, I think so many of us get so tied up in becoming reactive, right? I know in my business, um, my nine to five job, we are very busy all the time delivering things for clients. 
we're always on a timeline and a deadline. And I think what that pushes us to do is to become reactive, which can be exhausting and overwhelming. And you get into that space where you feel like you just have to keep going and going and going. So one of the things that the bookend to first deciding to do less but better is to then layer in building in the room for the downtime that will help you stay focused. Um, And I'll say that kind of at the end of last year, I decided in my own world to take a break and hit pause on coaching new clients. Now, I didn't fully understand why other than it had gotten to a place where I wasn't clear on the kinds of people that I wanted to coach. And I hadn't felt like coaching was hitting that spot for me that felt like in the essentialist world, like that it was in a space that really mattered because I'd been doing a lot of different clients, you know, prior to becoming certified and then just hadn't taken that time to reassess and determine if the kind of clients were the kind of clients I wanted to continue to work with. I will say I didn't know where this was going to lead, but I kind of very intuitively decided to take a break. What it did give me was clarity. And that's been so interesting. Even over the last couple of weeks, it's become even clearer. Although I am coaching again, my ideal where I love to coach is more in this world kind of made up this term that was based on something that I actually the company Salesforce does. And so I like to consider myself now a project coach and consultant because it lets me play in that sweet spot of being a project manager and a coach. And I can help people who are maybe considering creating their own show, their podcast, or creating their own new entrepreneurial endeavor. But it's a really cool space because it involves transition and mindset and action and inspiration and all the things that I do on this show as well. And I'm really excited about this new direction. But it wouldn't have been possible if I hadn't had slowed down and hit pause. I find that I often take that same kind of pause even with this podcast. Since I've been around for almost four years, I do get pitched a lot. And thank you. I love it when you guys pitch ideas. And I have a lovely relationship with a couple of literary reps. And it's really lovely to be asked to have people on the show. And I think, you know, one of the things that I've hit the pause button on and then gotten more clarity on so that I can do less but better in, especially season four, I try and remain true to this, is I know that one of the really special things about the show is that I am the curator of the content. And that would be the same thing for you if you have a blog or you create something. It's your lens that makes the content itself really special, you know, and people get to know you because of how you choose what you write about or what you share about. And so I know that that's one of the things that I bring to the show. And so for season four, I've gone back to my my roots, if you will, because um, season one, I had a list and some of those people, boy, George, still have not been on the show. And I'm going back to having a list. I'm going to pitch those folks and try and things get things batched and loaded so that I'm doing less but better. And I'm also laser focused on something that feels really meaningful and purposeful. And there's going to be some other changes too that I'm really super excited about. And one of the other things this brings up for me too is, might be a nudge for you as well, is as you are looking at being laser focused and finding your own clarity, you know, um, something that somebody said to me once in a retreat setting was a no is as blessed as a yes. And I really loved that because it gives that very laser focused clarity around when you say no to something, the other people around you are also very happy to hear that you are being direct and specific and (laughs) you're not just dragging them on, you know, as you try and make up your mind about doing something. And so what does this all mean for you? You know, I've given a couple of examples of how essentialism has played out in my own life. And one of the things around less but better and finding essential few that I love is it really can help dictate what you do with your day, whether that be at your nine to five or maybe in your home or whatever it is, is that when you prioritize, and I love that Greg McCallum points out that the word prioritize up until only about 200 years ago really meant the first thing. There was only one priority. And now, now of course, um, priorities is a plural and sometimes you have 10 or 20 of them and But really, when you boil it back down and make sure that one or two or three things are your priority for a day and get those done, then you can work really smart. And so one way that I've layered all of this into my own day is 
for each day when I'm doing my work, I do take a half sheet of a binder paper and I write out three priorities that I'm going to get done that day. And so that moment is both those things of I'm doing less but better and I'm also taking that pause to prioritize my day and make sure I'm on track so that I have meaningful things that I have accomplished by the time I'm done. I encourage you to give that a try. It's really simple. It seems awfully easy, but it's really, it it can be really impactful. And then it's so funny because my mom (laughs) pulled out this um, newspaper clipping from when she was a college student and got interviewed as a student that was juggling both work and studies. And she said, um, One of her very favorite time management tricks, and this is so close to the things that I did, so that's why we were laughing about it, was that she had both a short-term priority list and then a long-term goals list. And you can move one over to the other, right, from long-term goals into shorter-term priorities as it becomes appropriate, but that's also a really nice way. So you don't feel like your one to-do list has to encompass everything it is that you want to do. Because that's too overwhelming. And I don't think that honors the truth of essentialism, which is doing the less but better, right? Like be laser focused, have a mission, have a very specific goal in mind and work towards that. And also be super clear about letting go of the things that are not serving you. And the last thing that I want to touch on is a really lovely idea that comes out of this book as well is if you don't prioritize your life for yourself, somebody else will. And I see this coming into play a lot, you know, especially in the situations where if you work in a nine to five for a corporation, of course, they have priorities for you as well. And so I think if you don't take the step back, and I would encourage you to do this if you feel like you're bouncing around and you're not feeling really clear and like you need clarity for yourself, list out the five things that are most important for you, right? And that could be family. I mean, I'm, I don't mean your day job priorities. I mean, you know, maybe it is I need to spend an hour with my family each day and I don't feel like I'm doing that. I want to have Sundays where we at our house, we have downtime. One of our things is we really want to have our grocery shopping done on the weekend. So we're not limping through the week trying to figure out what to make meals on. So I think if you sit down and kind of list out, maybe it's for yourself or with your family, what your priorities are, it will help you get laser focused on and give you a lot of clarity on the essentialist part of your day to day. I hope this has been helpful. I'm super excited to be sharing these quick snippets. We're in under 15 minutes. If you want more of this goodness, <laughs> there's a really lovely interview that I did with Michelle Ward. And we talk about right sizing the effort, which is really super close to this idea about do less but better. And then I also interviewed, this was in season one, so we're really throwing it back there, but Logan of um, a company called Music Makers, and he creates a song a week, and it used to be that you could download it for free, and now it's a subscription-based thing, but he talks about giving himself a deadline to do things, right? And so you don't get wound up in things being perfect. It's the uh, let's practice imperfect and done, which is also in that Michelle Ward episode. So I will link up to both those episodes for you guys. And that would give you a little more to dive into if you have not had your fill of Jumpstart Your Joy this week. Next week on the show, I'm going to be diving into another mini topic. And it is all about what to do when you're feeling stuck. And this is a topic that I attended at a recent conference and my aha moment was even a little bit surprising to myself. So I want to share it with you uh, because I hope that someone there, it's just what they need to hear. And if you want to be in touch, I would love to hear if you enjoyed this format or if something stood out for you, you can always email me at paula at jumpstartyourjoy.com. Or if you want to find the show notes for this episode, you can go to the site as well jumpstartyourjoy.com forward slash essential. And that is where the show notes will be. Yeah. And you can pick up the book there and I'll give you the link to the to audible and you'll get it all right there. So I hope you guys will come back next week when I talk about feeling stuck. And until then, I hope that your days are filled with so much joy.